Hey y'all. Hi. Okay. Here's what happened on Wednesday morning. I was video chatting with my friend Simbri. I was on the treadmill. We were talking and she was like, are you going to review the new Glossier lip product? And I was like, what? I didn't even know that they'd come out with a new lip product. So I immediately hopped onto the site. I put some colors into my cart and I checked out and the next day, Thursday afternoon, the package was on my doorstep. So that's pretty exciting. I'm very excited. And so I decided to just like film sort of a first impressions. I did try on two of the four colors last night just so that it wouldn't be like totally first impressions, like no thoughts formed. I have formed a few thoughts, but I haven't yet swatched around to see if there are any comparable colors in my collection. I haven't yet compared swatches of these colors to swatches of the vanillic lip. And there are two out of the four that I haven't tried on yet. So in many ways, we're going to be discovering this product together. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. My name is Hannah and I love beautiful things. I enjoy reviewing makeup, but I only review choice things. I only do it once in a while because I don't want to buy too much. I don't frankly want to own too much makeup. And I also try not to promote overconsumption here on my channel. So if that kind of balanced love of beauty sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. I'm very happy to see that with this release, there are a number of shades of brown. I think there are three shades of brown. One of the things, the only thing that I didn't like about the vanillic lip, which if you don't know, let me just give you the full background. I love this product, the vanillic lip. It's pretty much my favorite lip product of all time and Glossier has rudely discontinued it. The reason that I was so eager to review this and the reason that I'm so eager to kind of film right away now that I have them in my hands is that it seems to be the thing that they're replacing the vanillic lip with. So I definitely have an interest in whether it's something I'm going to like or not, whether it'll serve the same purpose for those lovers of the vanillic lip who have now been disappointed or not. The only thing that I didn't like about the vanilla lips was that there was no brown in the range. The closest thing to brown was this very, very mauve color called Pony. Now the ultra lip comes in three shades of brown and I purchased one of them, Trench, the kind of lightest and you know, it's like, it's the one that seems comparable to Leo from the generation G. So I got Trench, I got Villa, which is like a rose. I'm wearing it on my lips right now, in fact. And then the other two, the two that I haven't opened yet are Coop, which is a, a red and Lucite, which is a pale pink. I'm going to open all four bullets right now and show them to you close up. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's exactly the same as the packaging of the generation G, except that it's light pink instead of white. And it says ultra lip on it instead of saying generation G. Generation G is their matte lipstick formula. So it appears that they're positioning this as like a glossy version of generation G. This is the color coupe. This is the color lucite. It looks more pink and more like it might have a pinky presence on the lips than I was hoping for but here it is. Here's Villa, which again, I'm wearing right now. And it looks a little bit more neutral and brownie in the tube. I find that it applies pretty pink in its own way to the lips as well. And lastly, this is Trench, which is that kind of um, neutral, warm brown. It's a little bit more orange than I was expecting it to be. And here are the four colors next to each other. We've got Lucite, Coupe, Villa, and Trench. Let's talk about the formula and then I'll do some lip swatches and then I'll do some comparison swatches to other products in my collection. It has no scent. That disappointed me weirdly. I, it all happened kind of in a rush. As I said to you, Simbri was like, are you gonna review? And I was like, yes I am, blah, 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 order it. And instantly was here, tried on last night, now I'm filming. You know, it all kind of happened kind of fast. So I didn't really have a lot of time. I didn't obsess over it. I didn't read the description a thousand times. I didn't read any reviews. So I didn't know that I was hoping that it would be scented until I applied it and I realized that it wasn't. I think it's because I love the apricot flavor of the vanillic lip. I don't usually like fruit flavored or fruit scented lip products. I tend to like vanilla, but the scent and the flavor, although it's not like you're tasting it with your mouth, but you know, the flavoring of the vanillic lip, it's like my favorite scent of any lip product ever. I just think that apricot kind of warm apricot is a really beautiful scent for something that you're putting on your lips. I realized when I started applying this and found it was completely scentless and completely tasteless 
that one of the things I like about the vanillic lip is that it makes me want to keep applying it because of the sensory experience. And I want a product like this, like a balmy product with color to make me want to keep applying it in that same way. I appreciate it when a product does that. However, I know there are a lot of people out there that are just always begging brands to make scentless and flavorless products. And so I understand why they did it. And I'm sure that for a lot of people, it's just gonna be music to your ears, you know, that I'm reporting to you that it has no scent. But to me, it's a little bit of a strike against it because it makes me feel like less excited to put it on, it just does. I'm building up Villa on my lips so you can see what it looks like at full opacity and so that I can tell you about the experience of applying more of it. So you can see it is pretty buildable. It's definitely, it definitely feels like you can keep applying, keep applying it. It feels that way, but it's also pretty pigmented. And another thing that I realized when I applied it for the first time last night, I realized that I had been hoping that it would really be kind of semi-sheer, the kind of thing that you truly can't mess up. Like it's impossible to put on too much of it. It's impossible for it to go outside of the lip lines. And it's actually not really that. It's got a bit of heft to it. It's got a bit of a punch in terms of pigment. It looks, it looks like a lipstick. I feel it looks like I'm wearing a lipstick and it actually looks kind of like a shiny lipstick. Whereas the vanillic lip is like a semi sheer product. And I always was surprised by how much this wasn't like a lipstick. And I would compare the vanillic lip formula to other products that claim to be more balmy, like the M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cushion. No, just lip cushion. Lip cushion, the M Cosmetics lip cushion. And I would find that the vanillic lip was way more sheer than the lip cushion. And that was part of why I liked it. This is turning up like pigmented. It's, it is like, to me, this looks like what vanillic lips sound like it would be. It's vanillic and then it's really shiny and it's pretty pigmented. So I found that it was a little bit more difficult to overline without it starting to look a little bit sloppy with this than the vanilla clip was, but the feeling of it, there are a couple of things I really like about it. One, it's nice. It's really slick. It feels super nourishing. That's great. The other, it's beefy. It's not going to melt away. It's like the opposite of a lip oil. It feels a little stiff, like stiffer than you would have expected it. It's kind of stiff in the tube and then it's like melting onto the lips, but it's sort of staying stiff. So you feel like this firm presence of it on the lips, but it doesn't at all stick together. It doesn't stick to itself. So it's definitely not really in the lip gloss territory. It's like a hybrid of all of those things. And I feel like that is what Glossier excels at, kind of making hybrids of categories of makeup products. I think ultimately I was hoping that it would be a really laid back toned down lip that I could easily pair with like a strong cheek look or a strong eye look and not feel like I had like a full pop of makeup on my lips, but just something that was like complementing stronger makeup elsewhere on my face. And actually putting it on, uh, I feel at least with the two colors I've tried, so Trench, the brown and Villa, which you know, I thought it was gonna be like the easiest and most nude for me and the most neutral to wear. But with both of these colors, it feels like a real lipstick look on my lips. Or actually the way that I feel is that I could mess with it and blot it and make it less high impact. Let me just do that to show you. Yeah, there even just one good blot has like melted it into my lips and really made it look like much more natural, like much less high impact. So I can wear it that way, but it doesn't feel as good. It feels like this product is really living its best life on my lips when I build it up and build it up and make like a shiny thick layer. But that is like a strong lip look. It's not the casual, easy, sort of subtle lip look that I was hoping to get from this product. I know that I'm gonna be wearing it blotted like this, but physically, sensually, it does make me want to keep layering it and layering it. So for all those reasons, and I think that mainly it's because it's not as as sheer, like it's more opaque than the vanilla lip. That's the main reason. And for all of the reasons that then result from that one reason, I don't like it as much. And I wasn't expecting to. I love the sponge tip applicator of the vanilla lip. I don't traditionally get along as well with bullets. It's really that it feels like there's more pigment and more of a lacquer quality. That's the thing that is gonna make me love it a little bit less but I bet I'll still end up wearing them. And of course I'll report back about that. Okay, let's get into some swatches. And actually I'm curious to find out whether or not the actual swatches are more sheer or not 
like I, I wanna know if this is just sort of psychological. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do some quick hand swatches and then I'll do the lip swatches. So there's Villa on the on my hand. It's gonna be the one that's easiest to compare to other things, I think, because of the color. Here's the Vanillic Lip Genius, which I'm gonna put right next to it. So actually, Genius is, Genius is in the middle, so it's like the, it's a lighter color, but it doesn't look all that much more sheer. It's just that it's a little bit balmier and a little bit less glossy. Pony though, which is my favorite of the Vanilla Eclipse, it does seem like it's shearing out a little bit more. So we, there's Pony there and Genius. Those are the two Vanilla Eclipse. And then here's the Ultra Lip in Villa. And so you can see it looks a little bit more pigmented and more slick and more shiny. It looks more vanillic, ironically. And then these two have a little bit more of kind of that satin, almost watercolory look. And they look a little bit more sheer, a little bit like they're gonna be one with the lips, which is, that's exactly how I felt. Like that's exactly what I was expecting them to show in the swatches based on how the two products apply. So again, this one closest to my thumb is the Ultra Lip. It's just thicker. It's like a, a thick, shiny layer, almost like more like Vaseline than the other two, but with more body than Vaseline. Okay, so again, I was wearing Villa at full opacity before and then I blotted it down and that's this. Now, uh, let me give you lip swatches of the other three. This is Trench, which is the, the brown one. So there it is with just a quick applique, like I just put on a, a tiny bit and Here's the thing, it went on really nicely, like it feels nice, it was easy to apply, but I don't love how it looks. Like when I look in the monitor and I look in the mirror, I don't love the look. I feel like the fact that it's so shiny, like it's ultra shiny, and I feel like weirdly, I know this is counterintuitive, but weirdly it's like it makes my lips look a little bit thin, like a little bit over made up in some way, which is a little awkward. It doesn't have that like natural, worn in, just sort of plump, easy look that I feel like I always get from the vanilla lips, even when I just swipe them on. It reminds me more, it reminds me quite a lot actually of the M Cosmetics lip cushion. And I'll be doing some comparison swatches. I bet that we're gonna find that it's the thing that's the closest formula wise of anything that I own. And what I feel about that, what I struggle with with that is what I feel about this, what I am struggling with with this, which is that one application, just swiping it on, the finish, just if you're looking close up at the surface of my lip, looks good. But the overall effect on the face, it just looks a little bit awkward, overdone, and a tiny bit unflattering on my lips. I like a lip product to kind of assist my lips in looking a little bit plumper. So what I wanna do is fuss with it. I wanna overline, I wanna kind of smudge the edges, and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now so you can see what it looks like when I kind of like get it to look the best that I think that I can get it to look. So there I've overlined and I've applied more. I've given it like a more full pigment application so you can see the color and it's pretty. I think that people, people who like love the, their natural lip shape, especially people who have like really lovely juicy lips are gonna love this product because it really does look beautiful. I know that I'm gonna feel more comfortable if I blot it down a little bit. And that has left a nice moisturizing layer on the lips it hasn't left very much pigment behind, and that's how I'm gonna be wearing this color for sure. And I, I think it's nice. A lot of it came off on my hand. So that was Trench. Let us now look at Lucite, which is the, the pale pink. I'm curious to, to find out how sheer it is, or rather how opaque it is. Okay, this is striking me as much less pigmented. I feel like a color this pink and this pale at the same level of pigment or opacity as these two would not be looking quite like this. Like it, it, you can see it has lightened up my lips a little bit, like it's left a, a tint on there, but it's like a cross between something pigmented and something just sheer and balmy. And I quite like that. I was hoping that they would all be at about this level of pigment. I'm also relieved. I think that what they did was they adjusted the pigment, they adjusted the opacity, opacity for the color, because it's such a light color, they knew that it would apply better and look better if it was just a little more sheer. And I'm glad that they did that. So there it is, more built up, more overlined. 
I love this. This is definitely the, the most wearable one and the one that I'm like, I can't wait to keep wearing this. I'm so glad that it worked out this way and I'm really glad that I decided to test this color. I have pretty pigmented lips. So a lot of times sheer-ish or balmy-ish products, these kind of like lipstick kum balm products that are in the, these light colors, a lot of times they don't work on me because they kind of settle in the lip lines and the color of my lips comes through and it, it looks a little awkward. This is somehow successfully lightening the shade of my lips, but without looking weird, without sitting weird on top of them. And I, it's just instant love. I'm like, let's stay together. <laughs> Glossier Ultra Lip in Lucite. So there it is built up. I mean, this is as opaque as I could get it. This is like full opacity. And there it is blotted. I mean, it's like visually when you blot this one, it's like a barely there. It really is like a barely there balm, but it feels great. Lastly, let's take a look at Coupe, the kind of orange leaning red. It's much harder to overline with a glossy product than with a matte product because the reflect, the shine shows the contour of the lip and it shows that it, you know what I mean? Like you can see the product wrapping around the lip line and it doesn't create an illusion of larger lips as easily as a matte product does. And this one, it's so, it's so pigmented. I mean, this is, this is a red lipstick. Like what we're dealing with here, friends, is a red lipstick. It's so pigmented that once I did it, it was really hard to take it back. Like if I were going to clean up that lip line, I'd really have to use concealer maybe even makeup remover and then conceal over it. So this is just, I know I look a little bit like a blow up doll, but this is like <laughs> what we're dealing with right now. A glossy red lip is a beautiful thing, especially when it's well formulated and the color is pretty. The color of this is really, it's really pretty. For me, I would like it if it leaned a little bit more orange. Like I, I feel like sometimes these orange leaning reds they kind of turn pink a little bit, like rather than a blue red, they'll turn in like the watermelon coral direction. This is almost like an orange coral lip. And again, it's a stunning color and it's hard not to love. You know what I mean? Like it's hard not to love a color like this. It's so high impact, it's so fresh, very summer. And you know, it'll be fun to wear for people, maybe for me, I'm not yet sure if I'll keep this color, but it'll be fun for people to wear. But I find that of the four that I'm trying, this is the hardest to control. It's the hardest to pull off because a really shiny, thick, slippy formula like this in a statement color, it's just more finicky. Like it's hard, you can't just slather it on. And, and it's not even slathering. It's like, you can't even just throw it on and go. You kind of have to mess with it and make sure that you're okay. And I personally, if I were wearing this and like eating and drinking and getting my life, I would feel like I was always having to check my teeth, check a mirror. This isn't really like an effortless, everyday, cool girl product. It doesn't really, for me, I mean, I understand why. It's like the this product, the style of it, fits the Glossier aesthetic, and I understand why they did the full range, all of the browns and brown nudes, which is fantastic to see, some sort of mid-tone pinky nudes, and then a couple of reds. Of course, that's what they did, but, you know, going through all of those steps ended them up with a red lipstick, a super shiny red lipstick that doesn't have the ease of use that I think a lot of things that Glossier makes have. Just be aware of that. You know what I mean? Like if you enjoy Glossier and you're shopping at Glossier because you really want things to be super easy and not only to be effortless, but to look effortless, this one, you maybe think twice about it. I'm not saying you can't make it work. I think for some people it'll be perfect, but just know that you're going to have a much easier time both feeling and looking like you didn't try too hard with these colors than you are with one of the reds in this really, really glossy, slick, just shiny all over the place formula. I do kind of love the like, I mean, it does look like I tried hard or I tried at least. And I ended up with this, like, it's got that like sensual sloppiness about it. You know what I mean? It's like rich, red, shiny, just like sexy, sloppy lips. <laughs> and I do love that. Like, I, I think that's really wonderful. And it's fun to like have that lip on and it's fun to think about like wearing that kind of lip once in a while in the summer, but it's just not, it's not what I usually think of doing with Glossier product. And it's not what I usually expect to see from Glossier. This looks like more Gucci to me or more like something you might do with a little sample size of like a YSL 
lip vinyl that you got at Sephora five years ago. I'm gonna take this off just cause it's so very that. And I'm probably gonna put, I'll see if I can put this one on or if this has stained my lips. And then I'm gonna do some swatches on my hands comparing these to other products that I own. I had a teeny tiny bit of color left behind, but it didn't really stain. And it didn't stain like my upper lip where I had overlined. So that's good and good to know. The first thing I wanna do is compare Villa to the M Cosmetics lip cushion in Venetian Rose. They seem to me to be the same product. So there are the tips of the bullets next to each other and I just swatched them so you can see how melty, they both got kind of melty and they both have that really high shine, almost liquid look to them. When they're warmed up by the skin, they get that really melty high shine look. So on swatching, I found that Venetian Rose, it's not only darker in color, but it's actually, it is more pigmented. It's a little more pigmented. So the, uh, I might've been calling this the, the vanilla lip from time to time, but the ultra lip here in Villa is a little bit more balmy, but they're very similar. And the way they feel like the finish that they give to the lips physically is very similar. So if you've tried the lip cushion, that's your comp. Like that's what you can keep in your mind when you're thinking about these products. Let's look at Coop next to some browns. So I actually have this little, this is my Sephora birthday gift. It's this little mini of the Laguna, the Afterglow Lip Balm in Laguna from NARS. And I also am going to compare it to the Fenty Beauty Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm in Cocoa Drizzle. And for color, actually, let's compare it to Jason Wu Biscotti. That's a matte lip and cheek, but I think the color might be kind of similar. I'm gonna put the NARS product right next to it. So NARS Afterglow Lip Balm in Laguna is much balmier and much more sheer, way less pigment, but the color is actually probably pretty similar. Coupe might be a little bit rosier, but it's a pretty similar color. Very different consistency though. Coco Drizzle from Fenty is a much deeper, much more cool toned brown, really different. And that's like a liquid balm. The pigment level is a little bit closer though to the Ultra Lip than it is to the NARS. And just for color, there's biscotti on the end. It's actually making, like these swatches are making the Ultra Lip and Coupe seem really, really brick, kind of, like a real terracotta brown rather than like a nude brown or neutral brown. The only thing that I really have to compare to Loose Sight, the one I'm wearing, is the Tower 28 Lip Jelly in the shade Oat. So there's Loose Sight. See how sheer it looks? And I'm not just talking about the light color. Like I feel like it looks more sheer, like it's swatched in a way that makes it look more like the NARS thing that I had on my hand before, or even more like the Fenty Pro Kisser Lip Balm than the other two Ultra Lips that I have swatched. Yeah, here's Tower 28 Oat. It looks more pigmented. And remember when I first got this, I was struggling and I still do a little bit. I have to wear a pretty thin layer of it or else I struggle with this like, weird line of pigment that gets pushed to the edge of my lips because there's so much pigment in it and yet it's this very, very pale color. I feel like that's what they would have run into with this glossy product if they hadn't toned down the pigment, if they hadn't made it more sheer. There's oat on the top. I like the color of oat better, but the balmy sheer quality and the level of pigment is much better in Lucite. Like honestly, this, the lip that I have on right now, this is what I was hoping that I was buying when I bought oat from Tower 28. And lastly, the moment we've all been waiting for, let's compare Coop to Goldie Red, the Gucci lip wall. There's Coop. I can already tell it's it's gonna be like more, more of a fire red. Well, mm. okay, I'm sorry to report to those of you who are hoping that this was a dupe and that you could buy the Glossier one. If you've, are, if you've always wanted Goldie Red and you were like, maybe you can get the Glossier one. Here's the thing about Goldie Red which is right here. This is the um, Glossier, that's Coupe, and that's Goldie Red, the Gucci lip wall. It's a little dirty. It's got this really special kind of like dirty tone to it. And it's also more balmy. This one, the Glossier one here is much more shiny, much thicker. It's like that thick layer of like painted on lacquer. And Goldie Red is a little bit more something that's going to like melt into the lips and become one with the lips. Sorry, I had to take a quick break. I think that I was about to say that to me, Goldie Red from Gucci, the lip wall, it actually is 
it's not just the color, it's like the combination of the color and the formula and even the packaging. There really is nothing like it. Like I really, really do love it. I have tried a couple of like drugstore things, other things, K-beauty things, to see if I could find something where it's like, this is a really great dupe for Goldie Red. The thing is that in practice, there are a lot of things that are really similar to it. You definitely don't have to go buy it if you want like a balmy semi-sheer lip. There are a lot of things, but I've never swatched something and been like, oh yeah, this is an exact, this is like a dead ringer for Gucci's Goldie Red. It has a special place kind of like in my heart and in my collection. Uh, but let me get, I wanna swatch the other, the reds from the Vanillic Lip Range alongside Casino, I mean Coop. I'm gonna swatch Casino first alongside Coop. I feel like they're probably almost exactly the same, if not exactly the same. And I'll also put Goldie Red back on, back on my hand um, so you can see kind of like all of the reds together. So there's Coop, that's the Ultra Lip. Casino is almost the same, but I actually find that that is a bit more orange. Like it has a little bit less of that watermelon coral tint that I was saying is the thing that I don't like about Coop, the Ultra Lip. It's a little bit closer to just like a straight orange, but they are, especially for all intents and purposes, they are really similar. There's Disco in the middle. That is one of my two favorites of the vanilla lip, lip range. It's like a really, really amazing, easy to wear brick kind of like terracotta actually i think that brick implies a little bit more of like a blue tone and that's what you get with driver which is this fourth one and then lastly goldie red which is more sheer and balmy than any of them probably closest to disco of any of them but still it's like a little bit less terracotta and dusky and a little bit more red than disco but way way duskier than these other brighter ones so again, Coupe, the Ultra Lip is there at the bottom. Then we have the three Vanillic Lips and on top is the Gucci. Y'all, some drama has unexpectedly gone down in the middle. I mean, I guess towards the end of filming this review. I had to get up and help with something in the house. I had to get up from, and help with something. And then I came back and I filmed the outro, but somehow it wasn't recorded. Like I, it started recording and then it like turned off right away and I didn't notice and I like filmed the whole outro and it, and it wasn't recorded. So we're trying again, but I did want to tell you that when I got up to do things, I was talking to Joe right before I came back to film, to, to do what I thought was filming the outro, but was in fact filming nothing. I was talking to Joe and he, took one look at me and he was like, what's going on with your glossy little lips? Like he noticed that something was different and he doesn't really notice, he doesn't usually notice that kind of thing. I think that it, it's the combination of the finish of this product and the fact that the color is lighter than my natural lip color. And it's hard, it's actually impossible for, it has been until this moment impossible for me to wear a product like that. Everything I've ever found that's like glossy and lighter than my lips, looks a little bit weird. And I do love the look, but it's just, I haven't been able to find a product that worked that way. And so it was so different from what I usually have on that he noticed and, you know, he thought that it looked nice. So I feel like that's just like something that I can add to the review. And it speaks to my point as I kind of like round out my thoughts here, uh, which is my main point. <laughs> my main takeaway is just that this color in this product, Lucite, is such a find for me. I didn't expect any of these colors to excite me as much as this one has. I'm really excited for this. I feel like it's going to definitely be one of those things where I'm super excited about it and I wear it like every day for the next two weeks. And then the big question, the long-term question that I can't answer in this video is, will I then continue to wear it pretty assiduously? Will I then really incorporate it in the everyday until I've used it up. You know what I mean? Is it gonna be like a long-term love for me or is it just gonna be kind of this short-term infatuation that then falls off? I'll make sure that I come back at some point in a future video and update you on that. The other three colors, I don't see myself wearing as often. I think that coupe, I will definitely, uh, like even if I ever want a look like this, coupe is like the bright red one. If I ever want this look, what I will be doing is wearing Gucci Goldie Red instead. And if I don't wanna wear Gucci Goldie Red, if I want something kind of like more orange or like much more high impact and glossy, I'll be wearing the Vanilla Clip in Casino instead. So I actually feel like I could gladly give this away. I might ask Julia if she wants it, or I know that Simbri was interested in trying this formula, so I might send this to her. This isn't it for me, even though it was so fun to have on, it was so exciting. 
it's it's cool in its own way. Like it was very high impact. I think for some people this is going to be the thing in this formula, but for me I have other products that just for small differences in the formula and color I like better. And these two, it's a little bit hard for me to know how I'll behave around them. I kind of sense that I'll be kept from grabbing them by the fact that the combination of the pretty high level of pigment and the super glossy and really like beefy quality of them can make them a little bit difficult. Like both of them looked, I thought, really quite good when I glossed them on a lot and then blotted them. And so I might end up wearing them more than I think I will because the colors are pretty nice and the finish is pretty effortless. I could see myself using them to like give me, myself a, a lip look that's something but that doesn't compete with a strong eye look or strong cheek look for filming. I could see myself doing that with these, but I could also see myself thinking I'm gonna do that and then pretty much never reaching for them. So I will also report back about these in a future video. Even though I'm not able to give you like the whole story of how much I'm gonna end up liking and wearing these for the long term, I'm still glad that I sat down and did this because I feel like a lot of the questions that I had about these products, like the questions that I had about them as a consumer, as someone who really loved the vanilla clip and wishes that it hadn't been discontinued. A lot of those questions I was able to answer just like today with this semi first impressions video. So if you came here looking for answers to questions that you have about this formula, I hope that you were able to get some of those answers. I hope that you enjoyed spending this time with me. And more than any of that, you know that I hope that you are taking extra good care of yourself today because that's what'll make you the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.